you by the Ad Council. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, we try to format this show in a certain way, and it never fails. Sometimes yeah. it's a three mat. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's kind of bizarre. Okay, this week in auto history, let's do that now. So in 1914 this week, Archduke, um, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo, Bosnia, which kind of started World War I. The odd thing was he was being chauffeured by Otto Mertz, who was a Mercedes-Benz team any, driver. Any relationship to Fred? Yes, Fred Mertz's. Great grandson. Grandson. <laughs> grandson. But he was a Mercedes Benz team driver, so kind of an odd connection there. In 1926, GM traded 667,000 shares of its own stock at a market value of, of $136 million to acquire the remaining 40% of Fisher Body to bring Fisher Body into General Motors itself. In 1931, Robert Glenn Johnson Jr., famously known as Junior Johnson, was born in Wilkes County, North Carolina. Do some moonshine running. And that's what he was very well known for before he went into NASCAR. He was a bootlegger. And uh, uh, June 30th of 1953 was the first uh, production Corvette was built in the Flint, Michigan factory. And that was the, the, the 53, the white Corvette with the red interior. Wow. Beautiful car. No, in 1956, no. President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed into law the Highway Revenue Act, which was the beginning of the interstate uh, highway system. In 1969, the last uh, Rambler was produced and rolled off the production line in Kenosha, Wisconsin. You're yes, in Wisconsin. I, I, know, I know where Kenosha is, sure. Uh, Rambler had built a total Parker of four. pins were right down the street, too, by Okay. The way. 4.2 million vehicles over the life of Rambler, yeah. which was more than I thought it was. I didn't realize. Also, the, this week was the last Thunderbird was produced by Ford Motor Company uh, in Wixom, Michigan in 2005. In 1992, the original Corvette engineer, Zor Zora Arcus Duntoff, drove the one millionth Corvette off the assembly line in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it was the same color combination car White exterior, red interior, as the first 1953 Corvette was. Well, you know, I got my picture taken with him before he died. Oh, and, cool. And uh, he signed it and all that good stuff. And then have it right back there. on July 3rd of 1985, the blockbuster action movie was Back to the Future was released today. Or oh. On the 3rd. Oh. That, what a great movie that was. And, and, again, all with a car theme. Yeah. You know, and think of if that movie didn't come out, DeLorean would be... A piece of, of the past, really, a lot of people wouldn't think much of. Agreed. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. We are out of time for this hour, but we're going to be back with hour number two after a quick break. This is In Wheel Time, and we are all things automotive. Thanks for joining us. Is your us. business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time Car Show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com. If baby could talk, she'd say a lot. You'd know what she's thinking and what makes her happy. But unfortunately, baby can't talk or remind you. You're the one taking her to daycare today, and she won't speak up if you drive straight to work like any other day and never think to look in the backseat. Every year, dozens of kids die from heat stroke in cars. No one is perfect, so set a reminder, and always look before you lock. Where's baby? Paid for by NHTSA. From Studio A in Texas, USA, it's hour number two of the All Things Automotive Car Talk Show in Wheel Time. Just ahead, Mike Satterfield joins us to talk about the Grossback Grand Prix coming up. In our new car showroom is the Mercedes-Benz AMG GLC 43. <laughs> Mike will take you for a ride in that. And later, inside the Mystery Garage... And our Jeep Trails feature, plus the stories making automotive news headlines this week. Just ahead in the 4th of July edition of the In Wheel Time Car Show. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, along with Mike out of this world, Mars down there. King Conrad DeLong right here. I'm Don Armstrong. So glad that you could join us. I asked Mike, I said, so what, where, uh, Grossbeck, I, I, that, that name sounds familiar. And I thought, oh, 
you reminded me that it is northwest of here. Yeah, if you go I-45 north and you get to Buffalo. I know where Buffalo is. Make a left, like you're headed towards Waco. And about a little bit less than halfway between Buffalo and Waco is Grossbeck right there out on uh, Highway 164. Mike Satterfield, how you doing? Doing great. Thanks, guys, for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. So I need to know about the Grossbeck Grand Prix. Tell me all about it. How- so the Grossbeck yeah. Grand Prix, um, thank- I'm sorry, uh, the Grossbeck Grand Prix really started out as an idea for um, enthusiasts to get together and host a automotive festival uh, that would appeal to people outside of just the regular car show or vintage racing crowds so you can get more people kind of involved in the hobby right uh we've got a time trial we've got a car show uh we've got food vendors uh it's going to be a really fun event when when is it mike september 5th and 6th so the first weekend of september labor day weekend oh correct yeah so so this is kind of the goodwood of texas that's kind of the goal of it is to grow it into like a goodwood grand prix uh here in texas it's a a really fun space. It's uh, set on old Fort Parker's restoration. So it's a really cool backdrop for this type of event with this pioneer fort and big arrows in the ground and old you know, pioneer cabins spread around the ground. So it's a really neat property. Um, and we've been really excited to work with Grossbeck and Mejia to put this event together. So tell me about the cars. I mean, is it a car show, a car race, or is it all things automotive like our show? So it's pretty much all things automotive. We've got a a 1.5 mile time trial where we're actually shutting down a uh, public park road. Uh, We got permission to shut down this road and line it with some hay bales and we're going to run cars down it. So it's uh, a little different than most of your standard car shows because people are actually going to see some really amazing cars at speed and in motion being used the way they were designed to be used. And then inside the fort, we're going to have some select vehicles on display. And then we've got car clubs from all over Texas uh, coming. So it's going to be a really fun event. So give me an example of some of the cars or car classes that are going to be there. Well, we've got cars coming from as far away as North Carolina to participate, including uh, Mike Powell's bringing his 1963 Ford Fairlane NASCAR. Uh, it's a historic NASCAR that he's fully restored. Oh, how he's cool. He's bringing it out, and that's running down the time trial track. Uh, we've got vintage Austin Healy's and Triumphs. Uh, we have a Chevron B25, oh. which is a really exciting car. It actually it's the car that won the 1973 Fuji Sports Car Championship over in Japan. Uh, so that car's coming going to run the time trial. And then on the car show side, we have all kinds of vehicles coming from formal Pebble Beach winners uh, to, you know, kind of your everyday classics. So it's going to be a really neat kind of span of vehicles. And really, we wanted to make an event that is approachable and accessible for everybody. Um, so it's an inexpensive event. I mean, a weekend pass is 20 bucks to get in. Uh, and that covers you for both days. Uh, it's going to be a really fun event. So Mike, are you going to have an area for like cruise in people like me if i wanted to cruise in up there we actually yeah we do have a um a bunch yes. of car clubs actually in austin uh, dallas and houston all planning cruises up to the event so uh, we have a special car club area for parking for classic cars so it's going to kind of be a not uh, just impromptu car show of whoever decides to rally in um you know we've got the austin fiat club planning one uh, we were talking to the guys at the houston lamborghini club they actually came through Grossbeck a couple of weeks ago for an event, and we stopped and we hang out and chatted with them. So that was a lot of fun. So, oh, so we're expecting you, a pretty wide range of cars coming. Did you talk with Philip Hurlson at uh, the Lamborghini Club? Philip's uh, he's a friend of the show of ours, and I know he's very involved in the Lamborghini Club. So he he would be uh, we a, were talking a good with a guy, contact. I was actually talking with a guy named Joe, um, but uh, Joe, Joe was uh, kind of putting us together with some of their their leadership to make that happen. Yeah, they're they're very involved in lots of activities. Uh, anything automotive. So there. have you listed somewhere like on your website, uh, the, the clubs that are coming from the different areas that you know of we, so far? Yeah, we actually just started putting out uh, articles every week on the site that are like just basically announcements of who's involved and the cars that are coming and things like that. So, um, and there's also Facebook groups that some of the clubs have already started that are for their individual rallies from Austin or Dallas and things like that. Man, so, this sounds like a ton of fun. I'm telling you. And I, yeah. I want to go. I want to go. And maybe, yeah, we'd love to have you yeah, guys. It's going to be maybe, a lot of fun. Maybe it'll be my opportunity to be the man on the street reporter from the <laughs> Grossbeck Grand Prix. What do you think? We need to do a live remote from there. That'd be a hoot. Well, yeah, we could just pack all of this up. Oh, Lord, help me. Uh, we'd pack all this up <laughs> and come up there and see you. 
<laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. We'd so love what, to have you guys. So, Mike, what is the? Is there a close place by that you can rent uh, motel rooms, uh, hotel rooms? What what city is nearby other than Grosbeck? So it's actually right in between Grosbeck and Mejia, um, and it's about 30 miles, 35 miles from Waco, so it's not too far outside of Waco. Oh. Uh, the, the nice thing is is that Grosbeck actually and Mejia actually have several hotels, um, and we've actually got a listing on our website of all the regional hotels during the area. And then if people do want to stay actually on site, we have RV hookups and camping spaces available. So if people want to make a weekend of it and come out and camp, um, that's available too because – you know, my, is my, seven Don acres, has so. done some glamping in the past. Yeah, so. as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, Mars is working on some glamping features right now, and uh, he he's trying to get Conrad and I to join him in the glamper. Uh, and I'm thinking that you know, now that you've got the hookups, I'm thinking it's going to happen. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's, it's try like not to use 60, 60 spaces. Try so, not to use the term hookup. <laughs> <laughs> so you are you are north then listening to your directions you're north of um Grossbeck. so you're up there on off of 14 off of 14 yeah so the actual old fort parker um is actually a lot of people get confused with uh, fort parker state park um for old fort parker is a restoration that was built back in uh, the 1930s that is a re- recreation of the original uh parker fort so it's a uh, correct re- reinterpretation of the original pioneer fort and they've got a giant arrow stuck in the ground that's uh, kind of a, kind of a cool thing it's actually the start of the Kwani parker trail but it's also where our finish line is so that's why our little tagline is the race to the arrow so they start oh, a mile oh, cool. and a half down the road and then they finish right by the fort and a giant uh, arrow stuck in the ground this sounds like an absolute scream. Oh, this is this is a car guys car event here so you can you can walk around you could take the family car. You could take the family. You could watch the racing. You could watch the car show. You could cruise in. It's everything for it. Okay, what about food and restrooms? Well, that's the great thing about uh, Fort Parker is it actually has all the stuff already built into it as far as the restroom facilities. We're actually going to bring in some more restrooms, obviously, some, some porta potties and stuff like that. But it's, it's a great facility, and it's, it's got everything we need. We're going to bring in food trucks as far as food. Um, I really want to create an event that, you could bring your family to that's not maybe a super car person. Uh, I, I go to a lot of these historic racing events and they're a lot of fun and they're great at putting on great historic races, but they're not really good at the hospitality side of it. So we wanted something that you could bring your wife and your kids to, you can enjoy it. Um, whoever the non-car enthusiast in your family is, will still find something to do and enjoy it, whether it's exploring the fort and learning about the history of the fort, whether it's, you know, just learning about the history of the cars, watching the cars, uh, enjoying some food uh, or just enjoying a day out in a beautiful park. Well, we're certainly hoping that this uh, current pandemic crisis that we're all in, that we can't go anywhere or do anything, that by then it will be eased up. And I think that people are getting uh, more accustomed to uh, a new way of living, at least temporarily, masking up, social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, and, and not closing down everything because we all are going to wind up killing each other if we all have to be you know, stuck in the house altogether for months on end, uh, afraid of uh, the germ so or stuck in a glamping camper with you and mars <laughs> i'll pass oh no we're dragging you into that glamper my friend yeah exactly oh, Lord. it right. sounds like it's going to be a killer event though that's it really be a lot does of fun. so september 5th through the 6th labor day weekend at the Grossbeck grand prix we'll put a, a, a link to your site on ours and we'll be talking to you i want to talk to you again before the event uh, comes up so um, let's make it a plan sometime in august that we connect again see how things are going yeah. and uh sounds great yeah, as we get, get a little bit listen man it's been great talking to you and we're really excited about it and uh they may not be serious but yours <laughs> truly is serious i'm thinking Okay, we've got the in-wheel time truck. Mars owns that. It's wrapped in, a, in the in-wheel time logo. You can't miss it. And I'm thinking about a cute little three-person glamper pulled behind it. We can put all of the all of the all of the equipment in the truck, and then, a cute one. A cute one, yes, <laughs> a cute one, and and a really cute one. And I'm thinking maybe along the lines of pink and green. How about you? Yeah, one of those nostalgic campers <laughs> yeah. that that, that yeah. you can pull along behind it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> or a, a, or one of those that is just nothing but 
a place to sleep. One of those low slung things that looks kind of like a little teardrop. A little teardrop right? trailer. Yeah, right, a teardrop right, trailer. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the three of us, it'd be, it'd be like the three what? stooges in that famous snoring thing in bed. If you guys do decide not to go glamping or you give up on it early, there are some on-site accommodations. So just let me know ahead of time. We'll get you one book. <laughs> Boom. There you go. I think that may be the Is really it, true it, answer. So the 5th and 6th, that's the Saturday and Sunday of Labor Day weekend? Saturday and Sunday. The big day is Sunday. Saturday is the um, like t test and tune and, and track right. practice and all that stuff. Uh, the big day is Sunday. But you can actually come out Friday through Monday and camp and enjoy the whole weekend if you like. So wow. people that have to work on Monday would have time to get home and get to work. Is what I'm thinking. And who would that be? Me? <laughs> hey, you know, vacation starts all over again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike yeah. Satterfield, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day on this July 4th. Enjoy the 4th of July, and we'll talk to you again in August. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That's uh, Mike Satterfield with the Gross Back Thanks. Grand Prix. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show live streams on Facebook.com slash In Wheel Time on YouTube, and our website, inwheeltime.com. Podcasts, they're available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeart Podcast, Google Podcast, Podcast Addict, and on and on and on. And you're going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, we're starting to post, you know, in addition to taking our, the show next week, we'll be posting the 30-minute blocks up on YouTube. Yes. We're also starting to put it on Instagram TV. Instagram if TV. If you like Instagram, you can just pop over to Instagram TV and check us out. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, we know that most people can't s sit and watch a two-hour show, so we break it down throughout the week. Segment one goes up one day. Segment two goes up another day. So you can kind of plan your day. Or a re uh, and special segment listen you want to us see in shorter, again. Shorter segments. On your way to work or whatever the case may be. Okay, we've got more of the In Wheel Time Car Show right after this. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of her stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for their age and size. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. A social distancing tip. While the CDC urges you to avoid close contact, like hugging or shaking hands, there are other non-physical ways to say hello. Wave, wink, use sign language, salute, smile, give the peace sign, throw up an air high five, do jazz hands. Remember, stay a minimum of six feet or two arms length away from others and stay home if you can. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hey, it's Houston's most in-depth car show, In Wheel Time, streaming live online on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. Uh, time now for this hour's car review. Mr. Mars had a chance to drive the Mercedes-Benz AMG GLC <laughs> 43. He wrote down on, on his notes it was a CLC, and I wasn't going to question him, but I'm glad that I did because it's not. It needs that little <laughs> on the C to That's make right. it a G. To, to finalize it out. And so what we're talking about, the 43, it's it's a G-Series, you know, the G-Wagon or whatever you want to call it. They There's actually three of them. There's the 43, the 63, and the 63S. You know, and obviously 43 is a small one, and they get bigger, bigger engines and everything. But they've all taken on this uh, a very similar look, particularly up front, because you're going to see that they've got the more rounded edges on them. And this one is the GLC 43 Coupe. Now, and they call it a coupe, but if you really look at it, to me it looks more like um, like a hatchback. You know, it's it's got that profile with that sloping back. A lot of them are going to that. Did you try to sit in the back seat? No, I didn't even bother. Because those those I, I ran across, it was a Honda, I believe it was, that had that that sloping yes. back thing in it, and you had to actually. Duck, get, duck in, duck, you have to duck to get in, climb into it. You know, yeah. I, I was. But this is an SUV. That they call a coupe. Yes, it is. But it, it, it's... Is it a four-door coupe? Yes. That's not a coupe. That's a four-door. I understand, but I'm just telling you, it's... I it's, know, that's what they call it. It's it just got that profile on it. So, again, you know, it's taken on across the, all three of the models. You know, the LED headlights, daytime running lights. It's all got LED lighting packages up front with the vertical grille now. You've also got 
a lower air intake that kind of goes along with that. And it had the power lift gate. We were rolling on the optional 21-inch black 10-spoke wheels, which are really nice looking. Uh, on the interior on it, we had the cranberry and black leather interior. Ooh, that sounds good. Sounds good. I, I really, I'm not a big fan of red leather, you know. But this uh, is cranberry. This is cranberry, and this really had a nice look, particularly when you add in the carbon fiber trim panels that go along with it. Of course, the front seats were heated. Had a nice color heads-up display system on it. It also had the 12.3-inch digital screen there that we used to call a gauge pod, but that's where you're going to see all your instrumentation and we stuff. We still call it a gauge pod. Well, people look at you weird when you do. And then over there, they also had the 10.25-inch touchscreen. No, they don't. Screen. They tell you that you're old. That's yeah. what they do. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, uh, particularly the girls. Anyway, so the, the 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen display right in the middle of the, the stack there. And uh, that's where you're going to find all your convenience controls and your rear view camera and the controls for the Burmeister sound audio system. And that's also Burmeister. Burmeister. <laughs> uh, that's what it said, you know, Didn't Android. They used to make shoes? Apple? I was going to say it comes with a couple of uh, steins of beer <laughs> 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 to go along with it. Oh, we, uh, never mind. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes. So up under the hood, we had the 3.0 liter V6 bi-turbo. So it's a twin turbo setup, 385 horsepower, 385 pound-feet of torque, and it's backed by a nine-speed automatic. But with that turbo and the 385 pound horses, you know, the, the transmission doesn't have to search. Yeah. It doesn't have to search like some of the cars. Because it's got enough torque just to push oh, yeah, itself it's along. Oh, yeah. It finds the gear, and it likes it, and it sits there, and it stays in there. Now, the EPA says uh, you should be looking for about 18 miles to the gallon in the city, out on the Highway 24, combined 21. And my gut? I actually got about 19 and a half. <laughs> oh, my God. Stayed on. Well, you know, you got Stayed gotta, in the boost a little well, bit. Well, you got to make sure there's no turbo lag there. You got to do the transmission <laughs> out. And, and, uh, and <laughs> so, so it's got the dynamic select on the driving mode. You got slippery sport, sports plus comfort, and custom. And you slippery had to try slope? all of those. Slippery, slippery slappy. Comma, I think that's sport, sand comma, snow. sport, plus, comma, comfort, comma. Custom. You're so never custom, going to get gonna, another Mercedes Benz as long as you live. A slippery after sport. We have ruined so, your car review. So, and when you go into the sport and the sport plus, you know, that's when you start affecting all the, the steering, the shift points, the <laughs> throttle response, the suspension. That's how you get all the sports factors. It, it makes a lot of adjustments and you can really feel it. As it does this. And you left it in Sport Plus most of the time? Well, we had to try the custom out a little bit, too, to see what you could really <laughs> do with it. So, you know, and, and when you're driving this vehicle, because of the, the power to weight ratio and stuff, it's got a really lightweight feel to it, and it feels very nimble. The quick steering, particularly when you've got the adaptive suspension working in there for you, I mean, it's like driving a go-kart. And... Uh, <laughs> So it, it's, you know, Comfort Sports, Sport Plus is really some great places to be at. Now, here's where I think it could use some improvement. Blind spots. Because of that sloping okay, the C, the roof D, line, D the D-pillar C, C pillar, is big. D -pillar, yeah. I mean, it's to me, I look in the rearview mirror, and it's like I can see a porthole in a submarine. <laughs> That's about all I can see out the back. Yeah, but it's got blind spot warning uh, on it. It does. It absolutely does. You know, and, and I made use of it yeah. because I, that was just – you know, to me, there was no point in turning over your shoulder between the headrest and the D-pillar. You can't see nothing. Right, right, right. So well, and my wife has a GLC and absolutely loves it, but it's not the AMG one. I couldn't afford that one. <laughs> and well, we're going to get there here in just a moment, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for something to compare it to, you might look at the BMW X4 M40i, which starts at about 61000 Or, as Don mentioned, the Porsche making turbo. Or you didn't mention the turbo, but the turbo... To get up around the horsepower starts at about 83000 And a base AMG GLC 43 Coupe starts at $63,000. Now, we had a couple of options on ours. Some of the packages, they do a lot of packaging on this. If you buy the suspension package. The slippery sport package. The, the driver assistant package. Slappy. You know, you, you, you package it. Most everybody's doing it that way. So that makes the MSRP is tested $79,850. <laughs> And of course, if you step up to the to the larger size, the sixty three or the sixty three, that I would love to try those things. <laughs> Probably out. never will you'll, get another no, Mercedes. No, never ever again. Not after this review. So <clears throat> I'm still back on the Burmeister black and white saddle shoes, but that's just me. All right. <clears throat> What's my review? This week's <laughs> is that your review? Thank you, and I'm sorry that uh, we pretty much ruined it. You're going to have to. 
Redo but it, I'm sure. A great car. A great a great vehicle to drive. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun to drive. Absolutely. How many tanks of gas did you go through? Only one and a half. One and a half tanks. Okay. Just in, in less than 400 miles. I was going to say. <laughs> he, just, he, burned, he burned the fuel out of it. Uh, well, you know. Yeah, when you stay up in the boost, it, uh, it you, pours you a little fuel You've got a lot of research to do on that vehicle. A there was a research. lot of research to do. This week's car calendar and race card and other good stuff coming right up. 911, what's your emergency? God, there's a train that just hit a car. Sir, what is your location? Uh, 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 Look around for a street sign, sir. It's 8th and Orchard, 8th and Orchard. Okay, very good, 8th and Orchard. Sir, help is on the way. Why would he do that? What, the train still doesn't stop. You have to get there now. At a railway crossing, even if the engineer sees you and hits the brakes, it can take a mile for the train to stop. And for you, that's too late. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. I think it's our turn again. Uh, it's in wheel time, America's most popular car talk show, probably not by Mercedes-Benz standards, <laughs> but we are all things automotive. Uh, time now for the car calendar, the race card, and the event calendar. We're going to roll it all into one. Well, uh, tonight, Randy's going to have Nifty 50s up at uh, the Randall's. He is? Yes, Nifty 50s is for going. For sure. Go- yes, absolutely. Well, he's going on it every other weekend, so I went on his website and checked, and I put a link on our Facebook page as well. There's got to be a lot of social distancing there. Well, he wants, there's actually a pattern of how they want you to park every other car, and then on the row behind you, every other car. So be sure and bring your mask. Ten, ten feet apart, you have to have a mask as well, and if you don't have one, they'll have one there for you. Uh, tonight, it, and that starts, uh, it's tonight between 5 and 9, uh, up off of Grogan's Mill Mall, uh, well, up off Grogan's Mill in the Woodlands. 6 p.m. tonight's the Kima Car Meet and Show, and that's kind of a standard every weekend. That uh, hasn't been canceled? Nope. I checked, I checked them as well, so people are still having okay. car, car events. Uh, Coffee and Cars at WPC in Texas City is 8 a.m. tomorrow. The, and 2 p.m. tomorrow, COVID Classic Community Car Cruise <laughs> out of Pasadena. <laughs> Everybody's coming up with creative names for all of Wait this. Wait a minute. Could you run that by one more time a little slower? The COVID Classic Community Car Cruise in Pasadena. All right. So that's going to be – there's going to be a meet-up spot, and they're just going to go on a drive. And the, the drive is going to be south to Galveston. All right. And then uh, Sunday night's going to be Freddy's at 1960 in Eldridge. Uh, Wednesday is Freddy's on Fry Road in Katy, and then Fridays at Freddy's at Spring uh, in Spring at Kirkendall in twenty nine twenty. On July twenty fifth is uh, the Galveston Cherry Hill Cruise. Uh, they're going to meet up in Katy at the Bucky's at four p.m. Roll out at five. Connect with the Southern Group at six p.m. Uh, at the Bucky's in Texas City, and then they're going to roll on down into uh, Galveston, take pictures on Cherry Hill, and head out. But again, this is all about giving some space and distance amongst people. Troy's going to have another uh, Twin Peaks meet in the Woodlands, and that's Sunday, July 26th. The Klein Band High School Klein High School Band Car Show is uh, October 10th. And, uh, and then on October 25th, the Northside Mustang Car Club is going to have an open car show at the Conroe Outlets. So we've, we've done shows at the Conroe Outlets in the past. So this weekend, racing calendar. Formula One's back, and they are running uh, Formula One. So that's going to be uh, uh, their, their first. Is there anybody in attendance? No, there's no, there's no stands. There's people there, but there's no, there's no audience in the, in the stands and stuff. So that's going to be. And that's at the uh, Red Bull Ring in Austria. Uh, Grand Prix of Indianapolis is this weekend as well. So that's the road course at Indianapolis. Indianapolis 500s. I don't know that that's going to happen at all as the 500. Um, IMSA is at Daytona this weekend. Uh, NHRA, where are we at? It's here? all jacked up. Yeah, it's, it's just a, what, a, what an ass, Next weekend, mass. NHRA is going to have their opening event since COVID, and that's going to be at uh, the Lucas Oil Raceway in Indy. God. All right. Um, I have something that I've, I've wanted to mention um, the catalytic converter that we've all bemoaned for decades. But um, let me just read the story. John Mooney, Mr. Mooney, the force behind catalytic converters, died this week at the age of 90. 
Mooney, uh, it was June 16th, actually, uh, at his home in Wyckoff, New Jersey, credited with the big breakthrough while working at supplier Engelhard in advancing one of the most important anti-pollution devices since the creation of the car. I didn't know this. Saw the story, started reading, I thought, you know, I really should share this because this guy was truly huge. SAE International uh, considers it among the top inventions since the dawn of the automobile. The EPA says it has saved thousands of lives and prevented hundreds of thousands of throat and lung ailments. The modern catalytic converter, which scrubs smog and soot producing hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxides from automobile exhausts, has revolutionized air pollution controls with its invention in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. uh, catalytic converter development began in the 50s, was spurred by federal regulations that mandated lead-free gasoline, which hampered and in some cases disintegrated anti-pollution devices. The three-way catalytic a converter was a major advance over the oxidizing converter, which General Motors patented and began installing in vehicles in 1974. I did not know that GM had its own version mm -hmm. of a catalytic converter. Uh, early catalytic converters developed by Mooney and Keith, another guy, cut carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions, but the Clean Air Act of 1970 imposed new limits on another pollutant, nitrogen oxides. Right. The device they created, a ceramic honeycomb coated with various oxides, platinum, rhodium, using a single catalyst bed, was introduced on assembly lines in 1976. Uh, rather than look at the exhaust, he focused on the gasoline piped into the engine. If it was mixed with the right amount of air the exhaust would offer a one-stage converter and just enough oxygen to simultaneously render the three pollutants harmless. Keith later sent Mooney around the world with an assignment, convince automakers to add an oxygen sensor to their engines. The sensor would monitor fuel-to-air ratios so each engine could be tuned to optimize where Mooney's one-stage converter would engage. Mooney said... My greatest contribution to the world was convincing countries to remove lead from gasoline, he said in an interview published by Chemical Engineering. And remember at the time, everybody thought, oh, what are we going to do? Right. Well, it's going to rob us of horsepower, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Now we're turning out 900 horsepower engines from the factory, and you can buy them. At any rate, uh, he said in an interview published uh, by Chemical Engineering Progress in 2005, lead in auto exhaust called children in urban areas to lose up to 10 IQ points and caused hypertension and serious heart problems for adults. Mooney was awarded 17 patents and elected wow. a fellow of SAE, then known as the Society of Automotive Engineers in 1990. Although I liked my chemistry courses well enough, I've always had a practical bent, he once said, I like to make things happen, and that's what engineers do. They take the basic science and make things happen with it. Think if he'd have gotten a dollar for every catalytic converter. Heck, think if he had gotten 10 cents for every catalytic converter. Yeah. He'd be probably, you know, a hundred million dollars yeah. at least, yeah. But at any rate, I just thought it was noteworthy that uh, he, he died uh, in June the 16th. Very at smart the age man. Of nine. Very smart man, yeah, exactly. But looked at that problem, that issue, in a different way than anybody ever had Out before. of the box. That's it. Hey, I want to remind you that if you're a member of a car, truck, or Jeep club, you can put your group in our In Wheel Time Car Club Spotlight. Just email us the club's information and contact name and number, and we will take it from there. The email address is info at inwheeltime.com. We're back after a quick break. 